This laptop has two screens and no built-in keyboard, so how's that gonna work? Let's talk about it. If you've seen my main workstation, then you know that I'm used to working with multiple monitors, and whenever I'm using a laptop, regardless of how big the display is, I don't feel as productive. Well, the Lenovo Yoga Book 9i might have a solution, and thank you to Best Buy for sponsoring this video. So what you get in the box is a little different than with any other laptop. And to be fair, this isn't really like any other laptop. It's much more versatile than that with two touch screens, physical and virtual typing options, the ability to use it in landscape or portrait mode, and with a stylus. But let's get back to what you actually get. Of course, you get the laptop itself, a 65 watt charger, the active pen, Bluetooth keyboard, the folio stand, which I'll get to in a minute, but it also doubles as a case for the keyboard and the pad. And I have to add the fact that the packaging is great. Like I'm admittedly a sucker for a fun unboxing experience. Like maybe I'm the only one, but this packaging was super well done. I think that rhymed. That's no good. Well, in terms of form factor, before you open it, it's fairly similar to a typical laptop. Not ultra thin, but definitely not bulky. Around the edge, we see a power button, an electronic e-shutter switch, which disables the camera. We've got two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the right and one on the left, and this way you can charge and connect accessories from both sides. The top and the bottom are matte and the sides are glossy, and this teal color, which I absolutely love, will show some fingerprints with time. The hinge is super smooth, and I think the Lenovo added just the right amount of tension. Like, this is an area where I was a little bit concerned because they had to balance having a hinge that properly supports the monitors in any orientation, but it's still not too tight. And I think that they did an outstanding job. And we've got four Bowers and Wilkins speakers with support for Dolby Atmos. They get plenty loud. The sound was surprisingly good. You know, sometimes you're not sure what you're gonna get from a laptop. And because of the way they were designed, sound comes out from both sides of the hinge. So you're getting good audio regardless of which orientation or mode you're using it in. And we'll talk more about the different modes in just a minute, but first let's take a closer look at the displays. So we're getting two 13.8 inch, 60 Hertz, 2.8K OLED displays. Overall, the image quality is excellent. I love the color that you get from this OLED display and also the super dark blacks, which contribute to having excellent contrast. Both are 100% DCI-P3 displays with 10-bit color depth, which is over a billion colors. We're getting an aspect ratio of 16 by 10, which is great for watching content. This way, you're not getting huge black bars at the top and the bottom. And the displays have 400 nits brightness with 600 nits peak brightness. And of course, they're both touch screens. I also think a super important benefit of this setup is that both displays are the same. So your content looks the same regardless of which one you use. This way you're not having to deal with an inferior second display or some of those clip-on displays that you see on the market. Both screens are glossy, so you do get reflections, and I think some additional anti-reflective coating could have been helpful. If you're just using the YogaBook 9i on its own, then you just pop it open, position it like a traditional laptop, and you can tap the bottom display with eight fingers, which will bring up a virtual keyboard and trackpad. The keyboard has a full row of function keys keys and you can control the opacity, vibration level, and whether the keys make sounds when you tap on it. The trackpad has left and right buttons. You can also tap to click. It starts out in the center like a traditional trackpad, but you can actually make it full width. I was a little worried about how well this trackpad would work, but it's actually very responsive and surprisingly accurate. If you're like me and you prefer a physical keyboard, then you can use the included Bluetooth keyboard. And this is where we start seeing how versatile this device is. If you place this closest to you, you get two widgets to show up above the keyboard. And if you put it closer to the top, then you'll get the virtual trackpad at the bottom. The typing experience is pretty good. I mean, it's obviously not a mechanical keyboard, but for this type of keyboard, the keys are big and I didn't find myself making a lot of typing errors. The magnet is not super strong, so there is some wiggle, but it hasn't really impacted my typing experience. Now back to the widgets, I hope that in the future we can customize them, but for now, I can drag a window or a panel to the bottom display. The way I typically use the keyboard is with the included stand, which elevates the bottom display 
so I don't have to hunch over. Then it brings up the top display to about eye level. It's also great if you're on video calls because you're able to look straight ahead at the camera. The keyboard magnetically attaches to the stand as well, but it's a much more stable setup. And then I pair a Bluetooth mouse for the best experience. Now this gives me the same versatility I get from a dual display desktop setup with the added benefit of being able to rotate the displays into portrait mode. On my main workstation, I have four horizontal displays and two vertical ones. And that's because some tasks like photo and video editing I prefer to do in landscape mode. And with this laptop, I can do exactly what I do on my main workstation when I'm editing videos, which is move the timeline and the bins to another display so I have more room. Another great use case is if you're working on a project where you need a video, have a document or a website open for research, and you still want a full display for typing at the bottom. You can also have a video call on the top display while you're looking at your notes, AKA watching a movie on the second display. And one other cool feature is called waterfall mode where you can extend apps to both displays so as you scroll the content flows from one display to the other. This is super useful when you're working with large spreadsheets and it's nice when you're surfing the web. There are also some games that work in this mode. So for example, in Asphalt 9, you're racing on the top display and the bottom display shows you the map. Now at the same time, other tasks like coding while using a reference document are better in portrait mode because you see more code with less scrolling. And the best thing here is that I don't have to choose one over the other. I can just rotate the displays depending on what I'm doing and everything reorients itself. If you wanna go into tablet mode, then you just flip the bottom display 360 degrees, and the bottom display turns off and you're ready to go. You can also use tent mode, which is great for presentations. And this way the other person can see the actual presentation while you still have the presenter screen on your side. And what's kind of neat about this whole setup, especially from a portability standpoint, is that the stand folds into a cover for the keyboard and it has a slot for storing the stylus. And Speaking of the stylus, it's the ActivePen 4.0. It has tilt capabilities. It works well with the SmartNote app where I can take handwritten notes or sketch a shot that I'm working on. This is another example where having the flexibility to remove the laptop from the stand is super handy because now you have a flat surface to draw or write on while using the top screen like you would in a traditional laptop. You can use the stylus to swipe from the bottom right corner, which will open SmartNote, and you can swipe from the bottom left corner to take a screenshot. Now, another neat feature is that you can create a bookmark in SmartNote and pin the note to your lock screen as a reminder. For biometric authentication, we're getting facial recognition with Windows Hello, and I love being able to just open the laptop and start using it without having to use a fingerprint sensor. Now going back to the camera, it's five megapixels, it can record video at up to 1440p, and here's a quick sample of the camera and microphone. Here's a test of the camera and microphone. This should give you a pretty good idea of the type of image quality that you're gonna get and the type of audio quality that you should expect. And when it comes to processing power, we're getting a 13th gen Intel Core i7-1355U, integrated Intel Iris X graphics, 16 gigs of RAM, and one terabyte of storage, which is great to see at a time where some laptops still start out with 256 gigabytes. Here's a quick look at CPU performance, and we can see single and multi-core performance, both plugged and unplugged. If you're coming from an older Windows laptop, this will feel like an upgrade. And at the same time, this isn't designed to be a top of the line laptop as far as processing power. It has other significant advantage over pretty much any other laptop on the market. The Yoga Book 9i comes with Windows 11 Home, which makes it easier to be productive. Like all my Office apps work great. I installed Adobe Creative Cloud and I really like the snap layout and the multiple desktops. This is especially important when you're multitasking. I think the ability to easily move a window from one display to the other or to precisely position it within a layout is a super nice feature. And the work that Lenovo put into the software really pays off here because if you think about it, the software has to handle single and dual displays in multiple orientations. This way you can switch from landscape to portrait to tent to tablet mode anytime you want, and that's part of what makes this setup so powerful. As far as battery life, the 80 watt hour battery is rated for 14 hours of single screen video playback and 10 hours of dual screen playback, and it actually charges surprisingly fast. With my typical use, I'm getting somewhere between six and seven hours, 
And there is a difference between using both screens versus having the keyboard on the bottom screen, but it was much, much smaller than I expected. Now, of course, battery life always depends on what you're doing, the brightness of your displays, and your power management settings. Connectivity-wise, the hardware supports Bluetooth 5.2 and Wi-Fi 6E, and I've had solid connections with the included keyboard and my everyday mouse. The bottom display does get warm after a while, and you'll notice that if you're using the virtual keyboard. Practically speaking, I use the physical keyboard pretty much every time I use this laptop because the reason I would choose to use this laptop to begin with is the displays. So overall, from a productivity standpoint, this laptop does what no other laptop I own can do. It delivers a portable dual display setup better than any other laptop I've used. The fact that both screens are also touch screens is a big added bonus as is the ability to use the stylus and the various modes that I showed. It now means that I either don't have to bring a tablet with me when I travel so that I could use it as a second screen, or if I do bring a tablet, I can actually wirelessly connect it to this setup and then have an awesome portable three display setup. Having the top display be much closer to eye level when using the folio stand puts a lot less strain on my neck and it's much more comfortable after you've used it for several hours. The one word that best describes this laptop is versatility. There are just so many ways where it can help improve your productivity and I'm super excited to see how the software continues to evolve over time and where it can take this new form factor. Now you should check out this video. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.